We've been exploring the Kenai Peninsula and we've been having so much fun. We've made our way to Homer, Alaska, which is 218 miles southwest from Anchorage and is tucked away in a little corner of the Kenai Peninsula on the shores of the Kachemak Bay. This town is known as a charming town with big views because across the water are the Kenai Mountains, which just dominate the skyline. And it's also halibut capital of the world. People come here from all over the world, hoping to catch a trophy fish. We're starting our day off at Bishop's Beach doing the Beluga Slough Trail. It's a 1.2 mile easy trail that takes you through some beautiful trees on a boardwalk and it should also take you down to the beach. I feel like this is the perfect way to start off your day, just going for a walk. It's very peaceful and quiet, and you can hear a lot of birds, and it actually takes you by this teeny tiny little river, and it's just really pretty. What's super awesome about this trail is that it brings you through an estuary, brings you onto the beach. It's super easy and it's dog friendly and the views don't disappoint at all. In this area, there are so many float planes taking off and landing. It is so crazy and so cool to see them this close in action. We're making our way down the Homer Spit and we stopped here at Wild Edge Espresso to grab some drinks before we go check out the Boat Harbor. The little espresso shop was so cute. I got a brown sugar oat latte and it's so good. I've never had anything like that. I typically like my coffee black with a little bit of stevia, but this was a nice change. The Homer Spit is a four and a half mile piece of land that juts out into Ketchumac Bay and one of the best free things to do and best things overall is to come and walk around the harbor and just check out all the boats. We love seeing the boats. It's actually home to 1500 boats every single summer. Another free thing to do along the spit is to check out the many shops. Despite how small this place is, it's crazy how busy it gets. After 
after we ended our Kenai video, Grayson went fishing in the Kenai River, which is a world-renowned place to go fishing, and he caught some sockeye salmon that we've been eating the last couple days. It's so delicious. I think it was about eight pounds. We didn't weigh it, but that was our guess. So we're gonna make some lunch with that. The presentation definitely isn't amazing, but it totally hits the spot. Speaking of salmon, our supply is running really low. We caught pink salmon and hope, which we've already run out of, and we caught a pretty decent sized sockeye on the Kenai, and we're running pretty low on our stock. So I'm gonna fish here at the lagoon or the fishing hole in Homer. It's on the spit. It's a super popular area where you can catch king salmon and silver salmon, which are different from the other salmon I've caught before. And what's crazy is in Hope, you used like a pink fly and the pink salmon would actually strike or go after your lure. And then on the Kenai, you had to floss the sockeye because they weren't actually striking your bait. So completely different type of fishing, different lure. And here at the lagoon, is a totally different kind of lure again because the silvers actually do strike. So you can use a bobber with herring on the bottom, which I am not doing. I'm gonna use a little Vibrax spinner. And so it's pink because they like the color and it's got a single little hook, but enough talking, let's get some fish. jumping like crazy. Still nothing yet. I wasn't expecting to be a bearer of bad news, but we've been here about two and a half hours and I've caught absolutely nothing. Got about one or two bites, but the fish only bite here when the water's flowing in or flowing out. And right now it's kind of still and there's no water running at all or flowing at all. And so everyone who is fishing here is using a totally different setup than what I thought you needed. They're all using fly rods and doing the same flossing technique that you do in the Kenai. When the fish run by, you pull your line in and try to get your hook in the fish's mouth. The way that I'm fishing is not gonna cut it. After fishing the lagoon for a couple of hours, we got really hungry, so we came across the street to Swell Taco to try some unique tacos. We got a couple different tacos here. These two are the most unique ones. So we got halibut cheek taco, and then a fried rockfish taco. And then our other two are a little more basic, but always so good. We have a carnitas taco, and then also a bedia. We also got chips and salsa and we chose the jalapeno pineapple because that sounds amazing. We're gonna try out the chips and salsa first. This is what it looks like. Let's do it. In this salsa, there's pineapples, onions, tomatoes. It's the perfect amount of spiciness with sweetness. We're gonna start with the rockfish taco and as you can tell, they stuff it with a lot of fish. The flavors in this taco are amazing. You can taste some spiciness and the cilantro I love, and then the fried fish is really good. The next taco is the halibut cheek taco, and I'm gonna compare the two more unique tacos after we finish all of our food. 
I really love the fish on this taco and I like that it's not fried. I have nothing against fried food but I just feel like you don't taste the flavor as much. So I really enjoy this taco and all the toppings that are on it. We just finished the two more unique tacos and we talked about it for a couple seconds and we came to an agreement that we like the texture of the rockfish one, the fried and the crunch was so good, but the flavor of the halibut was much more prominent. On the rockfish one, we felt like the fried took away from the fish flavor or like the fish at all, whereas the halibut, you were really able to taste the halibut. So if you can kind of like mix the two of them and do like a fried halibut cheek taco, that'd probably be amazing. Now we're gonna try our other two tacos and give our final thoughts all across the board after. When we first saw that this restaurant had the halibut cheek and the rockfish tacos, we were so excited to try those. And they both were really good, but surprisingly, the bedia and carnita tacos were amazing and we would definitely come back and get those two before the other ones. If you've been around long enough, you would know that we love free camping. There are other campsites in the area that are paid. They're around $30 a night, and some of them are around $70 a night, depending on where you wanna stay. And they're all so crowded. The campground scene is just not for us. Each RV is like spot after spot after spot. And we checked them out, and we were considering staying, but they're all booked as well. So we found this free spot with seagulls, with views, and just the beautiful Cook Inlet right behind us and it seems like there's a thousand seagulls. I don't think I've seen this many in my entire life in one spot. We're gonna put our chairs out and just enjoy the sunset. What a great way to end the night after such a fun day in Homer, Alaska. We had such a great time from the food, the little hike, and just the beautiful views throughout the entire day. We absolutely enjoyed the area and had so much fun. There are a lot of tours that leave from the area and we're not necessarily taking a tour, but we are taking a water taxi across the bay for our next video to do something we've never done before. So make sure you have that notification bell on for when that next video drops and make sure you're subscribed. Stay tuned till you see what we're doing.